Welcome back to another video, everyone. Today I'm continuing a series you probably all thought would die by the first or second episode, where at the beginning of each month I'll talk about the games that I played for the previous month. I know I forget or just don't finish a lot of my series, but I'm working on completely fixing that. I went and finished Dark Souls on my second channel. I'm continuing this series on my Crash channel. I said like three and a half years ago, four years ago now, that I would finish the Platinum Relics. I'm finally doing that after four years. I'm on the final game now. I'm trying to finish different series that I've started in the past, or if I start a new one, actually stick with it. But anyway, today is the 2nd of April, so I'm going to talk about all the games that I played in March, which was really only two new games that came out that I played, but both of them were really good games, as in like game of the year contenders. We'll start off with Dragon's Dogma 2, because this one had a big controversy when it released. Everyone was kind of in universal agreement that it was a great game, the reviews were great, then the game actually released, and there was a bunch of microtransactions that came alongside of it. A lot of people don't generally like microtransactions in single player games or, or in any game really now i want to start off by saying i am not a fan of microtransactions or I, I don't think they should be in the game or that they had to be there at all what i will say though is that it was blown way out of proportion and there were a lot of people that had clearly not played the game that were complaining about them so their complaints didn't really make sense okay because a lot of people were complaining that it was pay to fast travel like they were taking mechanics that should have been in the game and they were taking them out to sell them to you for real money and a lot of these people were just making themselves look like idiots because you can fast travel in the game you don't need to pay real money to fast travel i suppose fast travel is somewhat limited in the game and even that i don't fully agree with i beat the game and i beat the second or true ending whatever you want to call it i had so many fairy stones throughout my entire playthrough because they actually are not limited at all if you're exploring just killing bosses around the world doing side quests exploring the map you're gonna find loads of fairy stones as rewards for side quests in chests killing like bosses around the world you might be able to loot them from there on top of that you can quite literally just buy them with in-game currency just gold from every vendor in the game and they are unlimited. You can just rest and buy them every three days in game. They are 10,000 gold and I saw some people were using that as a way to shit on the game. They were saying 10,000 gold for a fairy stone? It costs 20,000 to get a house in the game. Yeah, 20,000 gold will get you this really small house where you can basically use it to get free rests and you get a chest and stuff like that. I was able to buy that within the first few hours of me playing the game. It didn't take long to afford 20,000 gold, and not that long into my playthrough, I was always above 100k. I always had like 100, 200k sitting around from exploring, doing side quests, looting, selling stuff that I didn't need or that I would find that, you know, I, I didn't want. So every time I would like just visit a main town, I would just buy a fairy stone because I could, because I could afford it. And I had plenty throughout my entire playthrough. Basically what I'm saying is, just playing the game got me everything I could ever need. And let's not forget about the ox cart, which is also like a really good method of traveling. It doesn't go everywhere, but it is a really cheap method of traveling around the map. I think some people are just lazy. I think some people just don't want to walk back to a fucking city or something if they have to. Why not? Play the game. Dude, that's not what, dude, that's why you bought the game, isn't it? Level up while you're doing it, you know? Dude, play the fucking game. Like, if you're exploring, if you're doing different things, you're gonna end up with enough fairy stones. You're gonna have enough gold where you can just buy them. Just play the game. Again, I'm not defending the microtransactions, but I am defending the game because it's a very solid game overall. It's not perfect by any means, but it's a very fun game. And some people will have you believe that it's completely taking away mechanics out of the game and it's trying to sell them to you. And I just don't, I, I don't believe that at all. I will say though, having all the list of microtransactions show up after the reviews have gone out after all the people that have reviewed the game that was a bit scummy even i had like quit out of the game after i played it and i seen them in the corner of my playstation screen i was like hmm and then i sure enough went on twitter and a bunch of people are complaining about it and again you can shit on the microtransactions all you want go ahead but don't shit on the game because of that if you're gonna shit on the game shit on it for the story or, or something about the game itself that you don't like but anyway enough about that whole thing that was just something that, you know, it was one of the biggest discussions about the game when it released. The game itself, I played it on PS5. I thought the performance of it was actually really good. I'm glad that I played it on the PS5, even though it was known to be 30 FPS and 60 FPS on PC. Because I've seen quite a few PC players refund that version of the game and play it on PS5 because it was so unstable. So I can't speak about that version of the game. I know that had issues, but on PlayStation 5, it was quite stable for me. And it was just a fun game overall. Now, I played Archer. Uh, throughout my playthrough 
and I did eventually switch to Magic Archer. I don't know if I didn't give it enough of a chance, but I just wasn't feeling it as much as the regular Archer. I know it's a lot more flashy, you've got a lot more different uh, skills and it looks a lot cooler. You know, you've got arrows that you can control and actually fly them through the air. You've got like ricochet arrows where if you fire them in a cave it will just continuously bounce off the, off the sides of the walls. It's a lot flashier and cooler. I just wasn't feeling it as much and again maybe it's because I was kind of far into the game and I hadn't had my vocation leveled up as much. I just ended up switching back to the regular archer class though because uh, my explosive shot was more than enough to get me through the whole game. My triple shots and everything again it's not as cool but it got me through the game and it was fun. I just had a really good time and I'm not done with the game I'm gonna play through the game again on different vocations. Just exploring the world, killing the world bosses. Doing stupid shit was one of the biggest fun parts of this game. You can jump onto every enemy right? Jumping onto dragons or griffins and they'll fly away while you're on top of them and then kick you off. And in any game where it lets you kill NPCs or like pick them up and throw them off cliffs and stuff I had to play around with that as well. Like, I always have to do that in games. Like, make a quick save, do something dumb, and then, like, reload it. There's just always something interesting or entertaining happening. Like, getting back to one of the main cities, and there's just an ogre invading, and you have to just kill an ogre. Or a dragon, even. I think a weak point here might be the story for some people, but there's loads of different things that will make up for it. But right now, it's one of my Game of the Year contenders. The other contender being the other game that I played through this month, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, this came out in February, the very last day of February, so obviously my entire playthrough was in March. This was a solid game. I enjoyed it a lot more than Remake that came out a few years ago. Obviously, in this game, we're out of Midgar now, so you have all these different open areas to explore, and they have these big zones, and each zone has a fuck ton of different things that you can do. Like, so much. you got all these different walls, intel things these different battles that you can participate in summon crystals that you can analyze the moogle mini games there's a whole list of things that you can do in the open zones then you've got the story itself like the main missions i suppose every character got their own moment to shine in the main scenario like each character has their own kind of level where you have to use their own mechanics like kate sith which might be a bad example because a lot of people didn't like this level where you're throwing crates around as Kate Sith and his Moogle. Might be an unpopular opinion. I didn't mind the level itself or the gimmick of throwing the boxes around. I'd maybe increase the speed of the Moogle when holding the crates because that was a bit slow. The one thing I didn't like about the level was the boss fight, the solo boss fight. But going back to, you know, each character has their own kind of moment in the story where you get to play as them. They have their own moments to shine in the story itself, but also their own levels where you get to use them on a gameplay level. I didn't, I, was, I wasn't like the, a huge fan of the ending or the ending sequence of events, which I won't spoil because it's still a relatively new game and it's a very long game too. But yeah, like the, the final sequence of events, I wasn't the biggest fan of or how they handled it but the combat with the synergy abilities and everything all the various different things you can do in the world map the characters the story the mini games which this is another thing that had people a bit torn some either thought there were way too many mini games or others just enjoyed them i was on the side that i enjoyed all the mini games that i played for me it was a nice break from the boss fights and the combat sequences a nice chance to just do something else there's definitely a lot of mini games a lot there's some that are mandatory for the main story there's some you can do in the world map there's obviously a lot in the gold source that you can participate in there's loads of mini games and not all of them are hits you know some of them are definitely misses but from the majority of them that i played they were solid queen's blood is one of the best card games final fantasy has ever seen chocobo racing was really fucking fun it was like a fully fleshed out racing game and the the tough levels with the alternating doors and stuff can actually get pretty tricky but that was something i really enjoyed as a kart racing player you know someone who plays a lot of mario kart a lot of crash team racing the moogle mini games that you find in all the open world zones the later ones where you have the two minute timer and you can't get hit more than two or three times they were really fun as well even if the moogles themselves have the worst design out of the entire final fantasy series yeah i don't know what the fuck this is i don't know why they decided to go with this when they have they could just look at ff14 or you ff12 I really like the Moogles in FF12. FF9, even. Like, they, they could have picked any Moogle design. And it would have been better than this. But the, the mini game itself was fun. Cursa del Sol had some pretty fun mini games uh, with Red 13, you know, kicking the football into all the different goals. And there's different variations of it as well. Even regular things had mini game elements, like analyzing a summon crystal. 
I have to kind of memorize the buttons. They're not difficult or anything, but it's just an added layer of, instead of just pressing X and it analyzing the summer crystal and being done with it, it just adds an extra layer of interaction with it, I suppose. It was just a solid game overall, like a really solid game. Uh, good, obviously amazing music. Every FF game has amazing music. Story, gameplay, everything about it was just really fun. It was, again, it was just really that end sequence of events that I just wasn't the biggest fan of. Realistically, if, I've con if I have to decide my game of the year right now i know we're only in march or april now but right now again it's between ff7 rebirth and dragon's dogma 2. i think 7 rebirth would be in front of dragon's dogma but dogma not too far behind two solid games in the span of a few weeks from each other is insane oh my favorite summon in the game my boy alexander my god they made him a fucking beast in this game i mean seriously he clips through a but he's so big that he clips through a lot of bosses or just arenas that you summon him in. You summon him like at a tower boss, which is funny to do in the first place because you don't really need to. But if you do it, he'll clip through the tower. But yeah, they were the two games that I played this month. I guess I played FF14 too, but I played that every you know i've been playing that for years one thing i will mention it for though is because uh dawn trail got its release date which is the next big expansion for ff14 and it got its xbox release so if you haven't played ff14 which is like the final fantasy mmo you've got a few months before it releases uh in at the end of june beginning of july brand new expansion if you haven't played ff14 now's your chance to uh you know catch up play through the expansions and i was beyond hyped to see the release date for the end of June, just after the Elden Ring DLC. That, that's gonna be a, a wild week. It was supposed to actually release earlier, but because of the Elden Ring DLC, Yoshi P said you've got a week to play it. But anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Let me know down below what games you played this month or what games I should check out. I didn't really get like too much time to check out recommendations or anything because of these two massive games. But that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. Definitely subscribe if you're new here and I'll see you all in my next video.